Tito made her entrance into this room, prematurely, right there on the kitchen table amidst the smell of herbs and spices, especially onion. The way Nancha told it, Tito was literally washed into this world on a great tide of tears that spilled over the edge of the table and flooded across the kitchen floor. Maybe that was because she knew then that it would be her lot in life to be denied marriage. In the heart of a tumultuous household, not just comforting lullabies cradled baby Tito, a symbol of a burgeoning maternal connection. Yet, Mama Elena, the stern matriarch, shattered the tranquility, decreeing that Tita, her youngest, was destined to be her lifelong caretaker. Oh, my sweet little child, you've been your fatherless and without milk overnight. But fear not, my tea will be your magical elixir. The first person who will lay eyes on you will be enchanted by your strength and beauty. Eager to make them yours. Don't say that, Nacha. Tita is my youngest daughter, and she is destined to take care of me till I die. As you say so, Mama Elena. Tita's world shifted as Mama Elena's milk dried up. Reluctantly, Mama Elena agreed to Nacha's proposal, making the kitchen Tita's sanctuary. Scenes of teenage Tita bustling in the kitchen unfolded with Chencha in tow. While well, forbidden glances exchanged between Tita and Pedro hinted at a budding connection, Mama Elena's watchful eye bore witness to these subtle rebellions. In a beautiful daylight wherein Tita was serving food to the guests, there is a distinguished gentleman that watches her across the party and is captivated by her elegance. As the two slowly locked into each other's eyes, there is an instant connection, a spark that transcends the bustling atmosphere as if putting a raw dough in a hot cooking oil. The heat that invaded between the two of them and would break out all over their body. Senora Tita, I'd like to take this opportunity to say that I'm captivated and in love with you. I don't know what to say. Give me some time to think. No, I need an answer right now. I'm a man of firm words. My love for you will be forever. Don't you feel the same? I do. I feel the same way. Mama, Pedro wants to talk to you. About what? I don't know. If it is about you asking me the hand of marriage, no need to waste my time and his. You are my youngest daughter and you are able to take care of me till I die. But I think it's not fair. You don't have an opinion and that's final. No one in this generation questioned this family tradition and I don't want my daughter to be the first one. Mama Elena, Don Pascual and Pedro wants to talk to you. For the reason that I've explained, Tita is not an option. But if Pedro really wants to get married, I suggest my daughter, Rasaura. She is two years older than Tita, and she is ready for marriage. Please forgive me, Sir Pedro. Chencha! Tita! How can your mother be so cruel? We cannot just exchange tacos and enchiladas. 
What did she say? Um, and greet Don Pascual and Pedro. And toast for your sister's wedding. Lila Tita Mary Pedro? No, it's Pedro and Rosaura's wedding. Tita, eat my child. Food has the power to ease the pain. You know what? Don Pascual asked young Pedro a while ago why he would agree to marry without love. Then young Pedro responded, asserting that he was marrying for love, a profound and immense love for you. I can't eat, Nacha. I want to be alone. Okay, teacher. This cake is already done. No, but everything else, Mama Elena. Finish it up quickly and take a little rest before the ceremony. Good night. Come on. No one must see you cry tomorrow, especially Rosaura. Stop crying, or you'll ruin the butter. Come on, go and have a rest. Don't I get a congratulatory Yes, of course. I hope you, you'll be very happy. I'm sure I will be, now that I'm always near my love. What did Pedro say? Nothing, Mama. <laughs> I've done everything you're thinking of doing. So don't play innocent with me. And don't let me see you near Pedro again. Weeping was the first symptom of a strange intoxication. A sense of melancholy and frustration overtook all the guests, making them take refuge on the patio, in the barns, and bathrooms as they yearned for the love of their lives. Tita, I want to be in charge in cooking today. You've never cooked before. Should I help you? Mm, no, I don't need help.
What did you say, Pedro? For a first timer, it's not that bad. This is our last time doing this! Don't do that, girl! They're like the devil himself! There's a rumor that one dance from them and you'll be pregnant. Ita, it's my year since you've taken charge as the head cook of the ranch. I thought it, it's fitting to give you these flowers in celebration of this milestone. All at once, she seemed to hear Notch's voice dictating a recipe, a pre-Hispanic recipe involving rose petals. A peculiar alchemical phenomenon appeared to have taken place. Not just Tita's blood, but her entire essence seemed to melt into the very meal they were sharing. This, my dear, is the elixir fit for the gods. It's still something. Tita and Pedro stumbled upon a novel method of expressing their desires. Tita became the sender and Pedro the willing recipient. Her trudis fortuitously became the vessel through which this intimate connection was transmuted via the meal. The fragrance of roses that emanated from her trudis wafted across vast distances. In the midst of her trudis preparing herself to take a shower, in order to get rid of the pink sweat and rose-scented aroma she emits, as it provides a heat and strong aphrodisiacal meal, causes the water from the primitive branch shower to evaporate on contact and eventually sets the structure on fire. She escapes from the burning shower. She is captured by a soldier in the Revolutionary Army who was drawn to the area by her intoxicating scent. Tita is unable to follow her shooters and the soldier. Long wait was overdue. At last, the Saura will give birth to his first child with the help of Tita, Guide of Nacha in Heaven, and Dr. Brown. The delivery was indeed successful. With the baby crying, Tita had to take care of it because her Saura couldn't. They tried to find someone to help, but a person got hurt in the town. Tita, feeling a strong need to feed the baby, did it in secret. Only Pedro knew about it. Then, Mama Elena came in and Pedro steps back quickly.
Tita? What happened to the child? Did he eat? Yes, Mama. He drank his tea and fell asleep. What are you waiting, Pedro? Take the baby to her mother. The child must be accompanied by her mother. Pedro took the baby away, and the room was filled with a secret connection between Tita and Pedro. As Tita cradled Roberto, Dr. Brown commented the pair, noting how wonderful the boy looked beside his loving aunt. Touched by the compliment, Tita thanked the doctor. He is it even your son. I imagine how gorgeous you look like carrying your child. Please pardon me. Was there something I said incorrectly? No, I just cannot marry or have children because I am responsible for my mother till she dies. What? That's ridiculous. Excuse me. I am worried that Rosara may need a doctor someday, and I'm afraid that we didn't find one. That's why I believe that we need to move her to San Antonio, Texas, with her husband and child, so that she could regain her strength there and find the best medical care. A clandestine act hinting at the complexity of familial obligations and the sacrifices Tito made in the shadows of her duty. After Mama Elena discovers Pedro and Tita's closeness while caring for the child, she orders Rosaura, Pedro, and Roberto to leave the ranch. <laughs> A few days later, Chencho was crying. Why are you crying? to take over. There's so many works to do. Finish that first quickly and do whatever you want. But remember, no sobbing. Did you hear that? Just when I take off your orders, I'm tired of obeying your orders. Roberto said it's your fault. Good morning, Tita. As the news of Roberto's death began to sink in, Tita began to cry all the time. She was unable to eat and she stared blankly like a crazy woman. Hello, baby. Our housekeeper, Suella, is an awful cook. But the poor son and I have to put up with it. Of course, you don't have to. I'll tell Suella that you're not feeling well, so don't worry. Hmm? Tita, whose hands were now free of her mother's orders, didn't know what to ask then. They could do anything or change anything. Can you guess what I'm thinking? Yes, I will. Oh, no! 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 No!
I'll take care of it. <laughs> After they attended the burial of Mama Elena, the atmosphere was heavy and filled with sadness, though it doesn't last for long. It's a premature baby bird that requires extensive care. And your Sarah? When the birth was in the bedroom, I had to perform surgery, and she won't be able to have children anymore. I'm sorry. Is she all right? Well, she's in a fragile state and can't care for the child. in sorrow and will grow up in the kitchen. Enjoying her tea, she is my only daughter. I don't like her suggestion. Let's just choose a different name. How about Esperanza? I don't know, Tita. Tita, why does she cry when she is with me? Maybe she doesn't love me. Shh, that's not it. She just misses the warmth and smell of the kitchen. But I want her to always stay by my side. To keep the child close to Rosaura, it was vital for her to feel on Tita's presence in the kitchen. Tita, with her talent for infusing dishes with emotions, turned cooking into a deep expression of love. Every stir and ingredient measured became a heartfelt gesture of devotion. The child, drawn to the kitchen's enchantment, not only stayed there physically, but also immersed herself in an atmosphere filled with Tita's enduring affection. Father, I aspire to marry this girl in the future, much like you did with Aunt Tita. Not at this moment, young boy. You're too young. No, never. My daughter will take care of me until I die. When she grow up, she won't marry. Tita felt curious about Rosaura's plans for Esperanza. She wished her sister had never said those awful words. Tito wanted those words to disappear, as if Rosara had them inside and let them rot away. As you already know, the reason for his visit is to request for Tita's sudden marriage. When do you plan to get married? As soon as possible. Well, I don't have any issues with that. You have our approval. Let's decide on the wedding date. Well, I believe this is the best moment to give you this. Happy couple. Look after yourself, all right? I won't be away for an extended period. I assure you. I'm nearly finished, Tita. Our work for today is almost complete. Until tomorrow then. Thanks, Chancha. Tita navigated her way to the storeroom, cautiously avoiding any obstacles in her path. Without answering, Pedro went to her, extinguished the lamp, pulled her to a brass bed that has once belonged to her sister, her Trudis, and threw himself upon her, causing her to lose her virginity and learn of true love. 
streams of phosphorescent hues ascended to the sky, resembling delicate Bengal lights. Tita! Tita, get over here! Tita's not here. She's doing the dishes. Come, look! Oh, dear Lord in heaven, may Doña Elena's soul rest in peace, instead of wandering among the souls of purgatory. What are you saying, Chencha? What else could it be? Can you see? It's the ghost of the departed woman. She must be atoning for something. I won't go near that place again. Me neither. Tita? Yes? Tita, can you help me? Help you with what? Can you help me win back, Pedro? I think it's my body weight, my flatulence, or even my bad breath that keep him away from me. What do you want me to do? Put me in a special diet. Mm -hmm. Pedro won't even touch me anymore because of my body weight. Don't cry. I'll create a special diet for you. To become regent. Please don't cry. Your tears might make you cry too. What about my bad breath? Mean these for your breath. They can freshen up even the worst breath. You're such a good sister. I'm happy we're back together. I'll get some meat leaves. <laughs> I just dropped by to slice some bread and enjoy some hot chocolate. Welcome! Tita, this is my husband. Juan Alejandro, pleased to meet you. And this is my comrade. Nice to meet you. This is Chancha. Pleasure to meet all of you. Please come inside. <laughs> hey, Tita, I miss your food. Home cooked meals are irreplaceable. Even in the midst of revolution, when Juan and I are united, we vowed to find our way here. Your cooking brings back so many memories. So, when will my prayers be ready? I hope I'm not boring you. Of course not, Gertrudis. Why would you say that? It's your eyes. Your mind has been elsewhere for a while. It's better, isn't it? Yes. If you still love him, why marry John? I'm not marrying him. I can do it for two days. Why can't you get married? Because I think I'm pregnant. Better to father, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. How about Rosara? Does she know? Nobody knows. Not even Pedro. It's a good thing Pedro knows you're carrying his child. Oh, Pedro, it's lucky you came by. My sister has something to tell you. Go and talk outside while I finish this video. Why you didn't tell me? Because first I wanted to make a decision. Before you make a decision, you need to know that having a child with you is the greatest thing that I could ever hope for. And to enjoy it properly, we should stay away far from here. But we can just think of ourselves. There are also Rosora and Esperanza. What will happen to them? should leave. I'm tired of you tormenting me. Leave me alone once and for all. No, until you behave as a proper woman. What do you mean by a proper woman? How did you behave? Didn't you have an illegitimate daughter? You will be cursed for saying this way. No more cursed than you. Leave me alone. I can stand you. I've always hated you. While Pedro was in the company of his friends around a bonfire, little did he know 
that the flames would not only consume the wood, but also mark a tragic turn in his faith. He got burnt. Congratulations, Pedro. You've recovered amazingly well. You're no longer a patient now. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, you should have had that chancha deliver my food. You shouldn't be late for dinner. When are you going to tell him that you're pregnant with my child? I can tell him that. Afraid of hurting little Doc's feeling? No, it's not it. It would be unfair to treat him like that. He deserves my utmost respect. I have to wait for the best time to tell him. If you won't tell him, I tell him myself. No, he won't say anything. Because first, I won't allow it. And second, because I'm not pregnant. What? I believe I might be pregnant. But I was just late. Everything's fine now. That's it? You're avoiding John because you're uncertain of staying with me or marrying him? Tita couldn't grasp Pedro's behavior. He acted like a child having tantrums, talking as if he'd be sick forever. Maybe it affected his mind. Tita, let's talk. It's been so long since you married my boyfriend. Let's start there. You shouldn't have had a boyfriend or get married. I had the same right to marry as you. You had no right to come in between two people who are in love with each other. He married me because that's what he desired. He married you to be near me. He didn't love you. Let's not dwell on the past. Pedro married me, period. I'll remain as his wife. Do not let me see the two of you near each other again. I'll take care of my daughter. Stay away. And what makes you think that I won't challenge the family tradition? Stay away or I'll kick you out of the house that mother has left me. Don't worry, my sweet. The family tradition ends with me. No one will harm you. John, you should reconsider the wedding. Have your feelings for me changed? I'm unsure. Will you are away, I shared an intimate moment with someone I always loved. Do you love him more than me? I sense that he's the one that I love, but with you I feel safe, calm, and at peace. Well, it's so nice seeing a young woman cry in love from happiness. I believe that we shouldn't further discuss Tita with our compliments. Excuse me. Fortunately, Tita and her Saurus fight didn't last long. Because three days after the most violent and tearful fight, Rosaura died due to severe digestive problems.
remember the first time you heard this song? I'll never forget that. I spent the night restless, counting Faithful proposing to you. Little did I know, it would take 22 more years for us to be together and for you to be my wife. Is that sincere? Absolutely. I would never leave this earth without you being my wife. Just in wife? Certainly. Additionally, I desire to have a family. We still have time. Don't you agree? We're all alone. Nobody hear us. Mi amor, te amo. Pedro! If an intense emotion lights all the matches inside of us all at once, the brilliance would make us see. A radiant tunnel showing us a path that we forgot at birth. The soul will want to return to its divine origin. The longing for my mom's culinary magic persists. The aroma of her kitchen, the comforting chatter as she crafted meals, especially those Christmas rolls. Regrettably, my attempts to recreate them fall short. I find myself shedding cheap tears in the process, and I suspect it's not just the onions that's making my eyes well up. Perhaps my great aunt Tita, I've inherited sensitivity to onions, and she'll continue to live as long as someone cooks her recipes. <laughs>